The scholars of Islam, they say, sins are divided into two categories, major sins and minor sins. And we know this by way of Quran, Sunnah, consensus and logic. Minor sins can be amplified and they can be transformed into major ones by certain accompanying factors that may attach to them. I share with you, brothers and sisters, five factors which if they are present in the life of a sinner will cause this minor sin to be magnified, amplified, aggrandized. It is no longer minor. What are they? The first of these magnifiers, the first of these transformers of minor sins into major is to belittle the sin. The sinner is advised and he goes, others are doing far worse. Why are you advising me? Others are doing way more wacko stuff than what I'm doing. See, a person who speaks like this and belittles sins is a person who surely has not recognized Allah as Allah deserves to be recognized. He is Allah, the owner of all dominion, the possessor of the heavens and the earth, the worthiest of our fear and our hope and our love. That is Allah, Malikul Muluk, King of Kings, Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram, owner of pride and glory. How can any sin therefore be described as small? And that is why the predecessors, they would say, don't look at the smallness of the sin. No, look at the enormity of the one whom you have disobeyed. La ilaha illallah. Number two, insistence upon the sin. I'm talking about a brother or sister who has a long-term stubborn relationship with a sin. I'm talking two years, three years, five, ten years plus. It's the same behavior, same missing of salah, same lack of lowering the gaze, same using of interest, same hijablessness, same DMing of others, same gangster lifestyle, whatever it may be. It's been a while now. He's insisting upon his ways. That insistence amplifies the sin not always because of the sin because of the insistence and that is why Imam Ibn Qayyim he would say insistence upon a sin may render a minor one into a major one rather he said it can take the crime to the worst of all levels because you're not changing every one of us even the most devout of us has sins no one can escape that description but what makes the believer different from others is that he doesn't insist upon his ways, her ways. Allah said, describing the believers, وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا They do not insist upon their ways. They change. And that is why Abdullah ibn Abbas, he has beautiful words. He said, there's no such thing as a minor sin when there is insistence. And there is no such thing as a major sin when there is repentance. La ilaha illallah. What is the third amplifier of minor sins? To publicly display your sin proclaiming the sin to the world. Because this person is saying, I am a sinner and I don't care. I've disobeyed Allah and let the world see what I have done. That behavior is enough to transform the sin into something major because this man, this woman is essentially at war with Allah. This is me without my correct Islamic clothing and let the world see it through my socials. This is me selling shisha, selling zina, selling interest and let me market my product to the world. I am selling alcohol, I am marketing it to the world. This is mujahara, displaying your sin to the world and challenging Allah Jalla Jalalu, which renders the minor into a major sin in the eyes of Allah. And that is why an Nabiul Kareem, the Honorable Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every individual of my nation on the day of judgment will be given well-being, afia. They will be safe. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, except the mujahirin, meaning except those who publicly display their sins to the world. And then he explains, part of proclaiming your sins is to commit a crime at night, a sin at night. And Allah had veiled you. He didn't disclose your crime to others. And then you wake up the next day. And then this person says, Ya fulan, amiltu laylata kadha wa kadha. Oh, so and so, guess what I got up to last night? I did such and such. The hadith says, وَقَدْ بَاتَ يَسْتُرُهُ رَبُّهُ Although he fell asleep with the veil of Allah, فَيُصْبِحُ يَكْشِفُ سِتْرَ اللَّهِ عَنْ But he wakes up and he voluntarily removes the veil of Allah. Every one of us has skeletons in his closet, in her closet. But what makes the sinning believer different is that he or she tries to keep those skeletons right there. They don't want the world to see those sins. They're not proud of them. Even if they're celebrated by social constructs and celebrated by social media and celebrated by celebrities, they are ashamed of their weaknesses. The brother, the sister, they see their sins as chinks in their armor, blemishes to their iman, dirt on their name. You don't want people to see it. You're ashamed of your sin. You cry about it. And that is a sign of 
Iman. That is why the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is happy when he does a good deed and he is grieved when he commits a sin, that is the believer. The fourth amplifier of minor sins into major ones is being bold and audacious now against Allah. This is someone who just laps up any sin that comes his way and any trace of guilt that may have been in his heart or her heart before this is gone. It's a question now of challenging Allah Jalla Jalla. No need to consult a scholar. No need to consult my conscience. No need to take counsel or do further research. Anything that comes his way from a DM or a relationship or a business venture, he takes it. Halal or haram, it doesn't matter. Uh, this person is displaying a brazen audacity against Allah. And that behavior of the heart renders what is minor, major. As Allah said about the people of the garden in Surah Al-Qalam, they said to one another, miskeen. They said to one another, listen, we don't want any poor people coming into our garden. Allah said, and by day, they made their way bent on their purpose. Highlight that. Bent on their purpose. Nothing was going to stop them. This sense of audaciousness and courage against Allah and carelessness, as if when you advise this person, you doubt whether they are even Muslim. Does this person believe in the hereafter? Because there is mockery in his tone. There is sarcasm in his reaction to when advice is given. Audaciousness, brazen boldness, courage against Allah Jalla Jalalu. That is the fourth amplifier. And I leave you with the fifth, despairing from the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah cannot encompass a man like me, a woman like me. You don't even know what I have done in the past. So he or she continues upon their way of heedlessness and they hear a lecture. It's not me who's being advised. They see a YouTube video. It's not me who's being advised. They read an Islamic hadith or an ayah. It's not me who's being advised because between the lines, what are they saying? I am exempt. I am an exception. I am outside of the mercy of Allah. Be careful. That belief that the mercy of Allah does not extend to you is one of those things that makes a minor sin into a major one. Brothers and sisters, shaitan spends a lifetime trying to build around you a confinement, a prison with long, tall, impenetrable walls. And he does this brick by brick across the span of your life. A brick of zina, a brick of adultery, a brick of interest-based transactions, a brick of nudity, a brick of hijablessness, a brick of missing salah, a brick of not lowering the gaze, so on and so forth, till the building, the prison is complete and there is no way to leave. Yet if a droplet of the mercy of Allah was to fall upon this individual, those four walls come crushing down in an instant because nothing can stand in the way of the mercy of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu when it arrives. So why are you making yourself an exception to something that Allah has not made you an exception from? وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Allah said, my mercy encompasses all things. Are you not a thing? Be hopeful. What is the way out from all of this that we have described? How does a person clear his name and his record with Allah? If any of these descriptions you felt fits you, turn a new leaf with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah extends his hand in the evening to forgive the sinner of the day, and he extends his hand in the day to forgive the sinners of the night, and he continues doing that till the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, make peace with Allah. Give Allah a wholesome and full and complete apology and say, Abuhu ubi dhambi, I confess of my sin. And you will find a Lord who was willing to take you back and to erase your sins and to replace them all into good deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from these five amplifiers of minor sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire us with a wholesome apology and retreat to Allah. And we ask Allah Almighty to forgive our sins and our parents and our teachers and our students and all of those who have a right upon us. 